friends. We are about to have a really beautiful full service. We have a full house. I'll just tell you who's in this space right now. So first of all, we're going to get to hear a really special and powerful sermon by Emmett Klieger. He is a teen who is no stranger to this community. He is the son of our former cantor, Yona Klieger. And we're all really excited to hear what he has to say about a special project he has created on awareness of anti-Semitism. So that's a little later in our service. But in addition to that, we have a group of teens here tonight from Temple Emmanuel in San Diego. And they're joining us. They're going to be joining Tiferet Israel. Oh, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm Tiferet (laughs) Israel in San Diego, and they're going to be joining us for our service and our Tempty Youth event later this evening. So we're really excited to have you. And we just have a lot of guests and new people in our space tonight. And so we're really looking forward to welcoming... I just want to say, Reagan Haro is well, coming. Well, that was that's coming oh, right right I next. Know, I know. But like we just said, let's tell everyone in the room. So like, hey, okay. About Reagan. And in addition to that, <laughs> we're going now to get ready to light our Shabbat candles. No, no, we sing Hidim on Tov. Oh. Rabbi Albin was moving ahead, f- fast ahead. So okay. Let's sing Hidim on Tov. Hidim on This is Danny. If you don't know Danny, we love Danny. He's usually here for Elioneg, and now he's here tonight. So page ten. He Repeat after me. How good it is. How good it is. How sweet it is. How sweet it is. To be together on this day. How good it is. How good it is. How sweet it is. How sweet it is. To be together on this day. He named my tov. that we're going to get ready to light our candles and another guest family who we have in our midst this evening is going to be brought up to do that for us. Reagan is becoming bat mitzvah tomorrow. (laughs) So if you are related to Reagan and would like to come up and light the candles, I want to not just to not just the women, if you, let's see, if you're related to her and you want to celebrate her and you want to show how much light you have brought into this community, please come join us. Don't worry, you don't have to sing, but please come and join us for the candles. You can find the blessing on page two or on the screen. Adonai, 
An early Mazal Tov. We'll see Reagan later in the service, but we can't wait to celebrate you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. We are on page 24. Shalom Alechem. Shalom Alechem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamlachim, Akatosh Baruchu. Shalom Alechem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamlachim, Akatosh Baruchu. Shalom Alechem, Malachi Hasharit, Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Bochem, Bochem the Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Bochem the Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi. Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamlachim, Akadosh Baruch Hu, Baruchuni the Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamlachim, Akadosh Baruch Hu, Seitchem the Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi. Amidst the darkness of our world, I found it absolutely breathtaking to watch people across our globe, mostly North America, come together this week to see our solar eclipse. Who went outside with your glasses and looked to see the solar eclipse this past week? Yeah, yeah. It was a reminder that God's light is present in our world even when we can't see it. That we can look up at the sky and see this completely natural yet absolutely miraculous occurrence and that we as human beings have this innate curiosity and appreciation to, to go out and take the time to see it, to view it, because we know how special it is to see God's creation before us. In just a moment, we're going to go into Hazarat Hashavua, which is a moment during our service when we can take time to just be quiet and reflect on the week that has happened and the Shabbat that is to come. And as we go into that, I offer this poem. It's called Light Leaks by Alden Salovey. In the darkest dark, with a sky full of stars, as the Milky Way arches across the heavens, my heart remembers the moment of creation. Light cannot be concealed, not even by God, not even that special light reserved only for the righteous. It leaks out from the vaults of heaven into the words of Torah to guide our way. The light is yours when you seek it with your heart, the heart that is inside your soul, the heart that's inside your breathing, the heart that's inside your being. In the brightest brightness, in a day full of light, as the sun travels across a full moon sky, my heart remembers God's blessings. So I ask you tonight, where has God's blessings showed itself, themselves, in your life during this past week? 
we'll take a moment now for a quiet reflection. We turn now to page 20 to welcome our Shabbat beloved with Lachadodi. Lachadodi, Likrat Kala, Penei Shabbat, Nikabela. face the entrance as we welcome the Shabbat bride into the room and into our hearts. Verse 9. Shalom <laughs> We turn now to page 28. We stay standing as we get ready to recite Barhu, our call to worship. <laughs> Yeah, I like 
Turn to page 34 as we get ready to sing Shema together, all about the oneness both of this community and this space tonight, the Jewish community and the human community all aligned with our one and only God. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai On page 40, we turn for Micha Mocha, our song of freedom, where we celebrate the Israelites once enslaved, once caught in the darkness of the world around them and the narrowness of the place where they were, where they leave all of that behind and march toward freedom, toward an open expanse in front of them. <laughs> continue on page 42 with a, one of my newest favorite melodies um, that we share every third Friday of the month with Danny. First of all, how, who feels uplifted by his beautiful guitar playing? Because I am every, always feel blessed <laughs> when Danny's here. Danny plays um, and helps musically, musical direct for our LA Oneg service, which is in the chapel every third Friday. It's late night. You can eat and then come pray. Um, and when we created this Elio Neg service with our violinist and our keyboard player and our drummer, we each brought a nostalgic melody, something that really brought us back to how uh, Judaism made us feel from home. Danny happens to be from Argentina, 
you heard him talk, you would be able to tell. Um, and this is this beautiful Ufro Salenu all the way from Argentina that um, I has, is just so beautiful. So thank you, Danny. We're on, um, on page 42, the third line down, Ufro Salenu. This prayer asking for a shelter of peace over us. We are so lucky to be within these beautiful walls in the safety of this community. Ufro salenu sukat shlomecha. Ufro salenu sukat shlomecha. Baruch With us, the words are on the screen. Danny, you sing too. Ufro salenu sukat shlomecha. Ufro salenu sukat shlomecha. Baruch us have people in our lives who we hold close in our heart because they're in need of healing of the mind or of the body or they're needing or they're needing healing of the soul so we take time during our Shabbat service to sing Misha Berach, our prayer for healing we're going to begin by singing together as one community with the first part of Misha Berach, and then I'm gonna come around and if you're thinking of anyone who needs some healing tonight I'll invite you to say their name aloud so that we can all be praying for them with you. And then we'll close once again by singing the rest of Misha Berach in community. Misha Berach, this prayer for healing is found on page 253. <laughs> before 
come online. We have Mrs. Gabitza Shavili, Lasan Darbo, Judy Fenton, Jody Stetz, Pearl Boxer, Panina Tova Bat Abraham Basara, and Lois Lebman, Rita Newman, Audrey, and Judith Bennis. And on behalf of our community, we are thinking of Levi Ben Abraham, Jill Kahn, Megan Cavallari, Eitan Chaim, Woody Clark, Susan Davis, Larry Dobbs, Judy Fenton, Tanaz Fulati, Shir Gaon, Felicia Glance Goldberg, Glenn Grimmett, Andy Hale, Helene Hale, Eric Innocenti, Brad Londi, Sarah Batmalka, <laughs> Kathleen Agnes McCarthy, Velvo Ben Mayer, Sheila Merowitz, Sarah Batmalka, Rachel Moran, Jack Olshansky, Howard Rosen, John Rusikoff, Lindy Sobel, Mabube Suleimani, Paul Velik, Helena Wachtel, Freddie Wolf, Andy Wu, and Howard Zalico. Coming off of Misha Berach, our prayer for healing for those in our lives who could use some extra love this evening. Our hearts also turn toward the state of Israel, who I think could also use some healing and love this evening and this Shabbat. So I'll offer us this prayer for Israel as we go into this Shabbat. Misha Berach, Avotenu v'imotenu, God who blessed our ancestors, we ask for your blessing for the state of Israel and for all of its inhabitants. Mekor Chayim, source of life, bless and strengthen those who defend the land and ensure their safe and speedy return home. Protect them and guide them. Kadosh Baruch Hu, holy and blessed one, show Israel's leaders your path so that they may act with wisdom courage, and dedication, and that they may be unwavering in their pursuit of peace. Strengthen their hearts, but keep them from hardening. Matir Asurim, freer of the captives, watch over all of the families of the hostages and keep them safe, allow them to live lives of peaceful thought, of comfort, and freedom from fear. Baal Harachami, master of compassion, Help us hold the humanity and the heartache of the Jewish people. As we are made in your image, remind us of your ways. Spread over us your shelter of peace and fulfill the vision of your prophets. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not take up sword against nation and they shall never know war again. And together we say, Amen. We continue with our Amidah. We rise on page 46. We will sing these two lines together and then please take some time to go through the Amidah using the words on the page or the prayers in your heart. And when you've completed your prayers, you may be seated. Adonai, it's
As we close our Amidah, as always, with a prayer for peace, I'm very excited to call up Reagan to the Bima for her first <laughs> Temple Emmanuel debut on this Bima to sing Shalom Rav. Again, it's on page 60, right? Page 60. 60. Here. her a little teeny mazal tov. One, two, three. Mazal tov. You've got to save it for tomorrow. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> It is now my honor to invite forward to the Bima, Emmett Klieger. He is a 2024 Stand With Us Leventhal intern. He is the son of our Yona Klieger. He is visiting this weekend with his mother, Sydney Suskins. We're really happy to have you with us as well. And he, I'm not going to spoil it, but he has something really powerful to share with us. And um, welcome to the Bima. Shabbat Shalom. Speaking here tonight is almost a full circle moment for me. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Emmett Klieger, um, as Rabbi Alvin introduced me, and I'm the uh, founder and director of the Anti-Semitism Awareness Project, or as many people like to call it, ASAP. To say I grew up here at Temple Emanuel would be quite the understatement. I had my bris here, I made my earliest friends here at Temple Emanuel's ECC, and I acted in countless musical theater productions, and here is where I gained the early foundations to who I am as a person today. Growing up in Los Angeles, I like to say I was surrounded by a Jewish bubble. My little league had a Sunday option for Orthodox athletes. I went to Temple Emanuel's Jewish day school, and even when I went to public school, we had Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur off. And I felt like almost every day I would find out that someone I would have known for years, two, three, four years, was actually Jewish. Growing up in this Jewish bubble, I knew in theory that anti-Semitism existed. 
I mean, as the great-grandson of Holocaust survivors, I understood the pain that anti-Semitism has caused my family and my people. But I had never really seen it or experienced it personally. There just wasn't really room for it in the bubble. Or if there was, I never saw it. After 14 fantastic years in Los Angeles, the bubble finally burst. In the summer of 2021, my family moved to the Bay Area, um, specifically Burlingame, California. And after being welcomed in by truly some of the best friends I've ever made, I was actually really optimistic about the school year and settling into my new life in this quiet but very picturesque town. And everything was going really great until we found out about the graffiti. In August of 2022, my principal went on our school's daily news show informing us that there was anti-Semitic and racist graffiti in the boys' bathroom. She went on to state that the school condemned hate in all of its forms. And I'll be honest with you, I actually wasn't too concerned at this point. I thought it was just some freshman kid who had too much time on their hands. But then it happened again, and then it happened again, and again. But I still shrugged it off. But then the graffiti turned into posters. Across my campus, posters of Adolf Hitler were plastered saying, we can do it again and finish the job. My complacency really quickly turned into fear. After a friend said something anti-Semitic to me and working through our school's mediation pro process, I learned that what he said wasn't out of hate, but was out of ignorance. This moment, out of many, became my call to action. It made me realize that I needed to join the fight against anti-Semitism because I wasn't really sure who else would. Coming from Los Angeles, I was really surprised by the lack of Holocaust education in the Bay Area. And I realized that I could make a difference by educating not only just about the Holocaust, but the dangers of sitting idly by while watching anti-Semitism rise. That's why, along with many of my friends, I founded the Anti-Semitism Awareness Project, or ASAP, um, a pop-up museum. Through ASAP, people of all ages are able to receive Holocaust and anti-hate education. And I'm proud to say that after everything my school went through last year, this past January on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, over 400 students went through ASAP and since its launch, we've had approximately 800 teens and adults experience and learn from the ASAP Museum. To say that anti-Semitism is on a lot of our minds is an understatement. I know many people make choices based off of a fear of anti-Semitism, whether it be as big as choosing where to go to college or even as small as the clothes that you wear that day. So how do we fix this? How do we reverse this growing tide of hate that seems to be swirling and swelling around us? Where can we find an easy to follow, step-by-step -step guide on stopping anti-Semitism? How about the Torah? As Jews, the Torah has been our source of comfort. It gives us a moral compass. It has many rules and regulations. And the Torah is not shy about breaking down how we as Jews should deal with things that it deems as important. In this week's Torah portion, Tazria, we learn how to identify and deal with leprosy in an incredibly detailed step-by-step -step process. For example, the portion breaks down how, in diagnosing leprosy, there are clear markers, skin discoloration, hair discoloration, and skin bumps. The Torah even, instru even instructs us to treat each leprosy patient differently, depending on their presenting symptom. That's one of the incredible things about the Torah. When something is important, it lets us know just how we should proceed. So you would think that the Torah would instruct us on something we've had to deal with since the beginning of Jews, anti-Semitism. But no. In the Torah, there are no step-by-step -step guides on how to stop anti-Semitism or even how to recognize it. I mean, after all of these centuries, we have a pretty good sense when Jews aren't liked. But with today's anti-Semitism, the warning signs are becoming harder and harder to spot. The far right hides their anti-Semitism by ditching the obvious imagery of the past for a more professional look, trading in t-shirts for button-down shirts. The far left hides their hatred for Jews under the guise of equality and human rights, 
but in the process espouse centuries-old stereotypes in the process. I wish I could stand before you today and say that the Anti-Semitism Awareness Project is that step-by-step -step guide, a silver bullet to end the anti-Semitism of our time. But it's not. It's not. Ultimately and painfully, there is no cure for anti-Semitism in our world. But there are treatments. You probably haven't feared contracting leprosy in your lifetime, let alone even have thought about leprosy, except maybe this time in last year's Jewish calendar. What once meant being sent out of society is barely an afterthought. And that's all thanks to Gerhard Amauer Hansen, a scientist who in 1873 learned what the underlying cause was of leprosy. And in the 1890s, a the first treatments that didn't consist of simply banishing people to colonies was discovered. And by the 1940s, the first drug to cure leprosy was created. And by the 1980s, the WHO started offering millions of treatments all across the world for leprosy. Leprosy didn't simply choose to go away, but through education and hard work, humanity has allowed so many terrors, like leprosy, to remain only in the history books. This, through education and tenacity, we can treat anti-Semitism we see before us, no matter how challenging it may seem. In the ASAP Museum, you will learn about those who are able to break out of hateful cycles through the power of education. You will learn the power of building bridges and the power of our collective action. This museum is not a silver bullet. Far from it. What this museum is, is a wake-up call and a call to action. Will you be someone who looks to fight the hate you see in this world? I mean, it's a much easier and a lot less scary to look away from the problems that surround us. But if we chose the easier path, of sending people away to leper colonies instead of actually solving what caused leprosy, I would not be speaking about leprosy in the past tense today, but in the present. So please, take in what this museum has to say and has to offer, and truly take the time to think, am I ready to heed this call? Shabbat Shalom. ASAP Museum is currently on display in our social hall. So after our service tonight, we're going to invite everyone to join in the social hall to take a look at the museum. There's a little oneg as well, so please take it all in. And then it's also available for, for viewing all throughout our weekend. So tomorrow at 9 a.m., one hour before our Shabbat morning service, and then following our Shabbat morning service until I believe 1 p.m., and then also on Sunday morning from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So please, either tonight or sometime this Shabbat and this weekend, please take a look at the incredible museum that Emmett has created. This is the, I w this is the Southern California debut of the museum, and hopefully it's many, it will be on display in many more places to come. We are going to get ready to head toward the conclusion of our service as we prepare for Alenu, which is found on page 282. Thank you, 282. <laughs> I'm going to invite everyone to please rise for Alenu. Alenu le shabbat la don hakol la tekinu la leot se ebreshi shehuno teshamayim beyoset aretz umoshav yikaro bashamayim imal. Ushkina to Zobig of Hey Meromim, who hello hey no, hey no, Baanach new Korim, who Mishtahavim, who Modim, Leaf Nebele, Malhe Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruchu, seated. 
Um, <clears throat> when I die, give what's left of me away to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something, something better than words, something better than sounds. Look for me and the people I've known or I've loved. And if you cannot give me a way, at least let me live in your eyes and not in your mind. You can love me best by letting hands touch hands and by letting go of children who need to be free. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. We're now going to recite Mourner's Kaddish. And before we do that, I want to invite anyone who is a mourner this evening to stand and be a part of our community. If you are in Shiva, the first seven days of mourning, I'll invite you to rise. Or if you're observing Shloshim, the first 30 days of mourning, I'll invite you to rise. Or perhaps you are in the first year of mourning, and I'll invite you to rise. Would you like to share your names? And if you are here observing a yard site, I'll invite you to rise as well. You'll also see the names from our community on the screen. Tonight, our community is specifically thinking about Jack Berman, Elva Breitbard, Thomas Cavallari, Mark B. Levy, Sarah Sternlight, and Abram Schumann. And now, because there are those who do not have... Sorry, and we have Maurice Laurie. Lots of people watching online tonight. I think that's it for that. And now, because we don't... Some people don't have people to... Some people do not have those that say Kaddish for them because we stand together as one community for those who have died in recent violence in Israel and around the world from disease and too much war and gun violence. I'll invite everyone to rise as we get ready to recite Mourners Kaddish Together, which is on page 294. <laughs> Belma di Rahu Tev am Lich Mahute, Behayachon of Yomachon of Haye de Ho Beit Israel, Bagala Wisman Kariv Imru Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mevarach Lelam Olame Omaya. Yet Barach Vishabach, it Paar, Viet Ramam, be it not say. Viet Hadar, Viet Hale, Viet Halal, Shme de Kudisha Brihu. Le elam in kol birchata veshirata, tushbechata venehemata, dami ram be alma vimru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, ve chayim alenu ve al kol yisrael, vimru, amen. O se shalom bimromav, hu ya ase shalom, alenu ve al kol yisrael, vimru, al kol yoshve tevel, vimru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all of Israel, and to all of humanity, and together we say, Amen. Amen. You may all please be seated. Okay. We have some <laughs> announcements before we close our Just service. Some. So, uh, let's see if these are in order. So, Rabbi um, Albin already talked about the ASAP Museum, but there you go, there is a slide for it. Um, Rabbi Albin, would you like to say something about the Camp Newman's Seder Hacks? Yeah, so we them, at we? our temple are getting ready to do a bunch of different Passover celebrations in the coming week. The first ones begin on April 21st, and specifically I'm going to be talking about, where's our slide? I, well, that's what I'm wondering. 
Passover, oh, Camp Newman, Seder hacks, tips from your parenting toolbox. So this is at 11 a.m. on Sunday, April 21st. It is specifically for our religious school parents or any parents of youth. We're going to be visited by faculty from URJ Camp Newman, which is the Reform Movement's Jewish summer camp up in the a little north of the Bay Area. And um, they're going to be coming to teach us about camp, but also using their educative philosophy to help us as parents understand how we can utilize what we already know from our parenting tools, what we already have at home to make a really meaningful Seder. So it's a chance for parents to come together, socialize, learn about enhancing your family's Passover experience. That's 11 a.m. April 21st. We can't wait to see you there. And our wonderful rabbinic intern, Jake, um, is, I guess we only have one more class, um, but Jews in the American presidency. So if you would like to join, Jake is quite a historian. He um, wrote, wrote for political, he was a political, he wrote, he was a political writer. speech writer um, before he decided to become a rabbi. And he's using his knowledge in the very best ways. Um, so you can join this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And if you haven't been a part of our adult education classes here at Emmanuel, maybe this is a good one to, to give it a, a try. So please, uh, please join us. And so right after the Seder Hacks program on Sunday, April 21st, we have the Bird Goldstein Songs of Freedom concert. It is our interfaith concert of the year with St. Bridget's Church um, and with Urban Voices, a Skid Row choir. Please come support. Um, number one, we're so grateful to Robert Bird and Gail Goldstein who underwrite this concert every year because they truly believe in the value of interfaith relationships and even more through song. So you'll have to put down your uh, matzah making, matzah meal. Brisket making. Your brisket making, your matzah ball making, and at 4 o'clock, show up at Temple, put your feet up, and enjoy a wonderful concert. Um, I really, uh, it takes a lot to get people at this concert, and I, we need you here. Let's fill the room and support our intergenerational choir, our soul singers, and the other choirs that are coming to visit. So, uh, so we have as we go through the week, we had Lotta our launch of our launch of Passover was the day before Passover. Rabbi Albin and I will be leading this Passover potluck and learn a, lo a little learning, a lot of eating. So you're bringing your favorite dish and recipe. So you're yes. supposed to bring the food and then bring the written recipe to share, so that so we you can't bring can something taste, and say it's we secret. We can taste your food <laughs> and be like, ah, oh, I can't wait to make that myself. And then that's the point. And 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 do some learning along the way. We're gonna read Song of Songs, which is the traditional Megillah you read during Passover. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And um, that week we also have the High Village Seder. So just th those are our Passover programming. And. Oh, I, oh, my goodness. We, we also have Passover Festival Day 1 services. We have Yisker with, with Shabbat Morning and Emmanuel on the 27th. We also just, I always say, read your highlights. Every Tuesday, our weekly newsletter, Highlights, has everything in it. You will also find for Passover that we have a curated, wonderful page, tbh.org slash Passover Toolkit, that gives you Haggadot that you can download, videos. You're nervous to sing the four questions at your Seder? Play a video. We have them on there. Okay. Are we done yet? No. Okay. All right. This Two year more, I've been leading an outdoors group once a month, various hikes, walks, picnics. Our next one is on Saturday, May 11th at Will Rogers Beach Lifeguard Lifeguard Tower 7. Um, but it's going to be Havdalah picnic, so come bring your food, bring something to drink, bring a blanket or a chair, and come we'll do some light learning and bringing in Havdalah and ending Shabbat together. That's Saturday, May 11th. Beautiful. And last but not least, oh. I, I'm just not going to shy away from it. Please come support our temple. Yes, it's in my honor, but in truly, <laughs> I will say this, I will say this that night, like, I'm blessed to have grown up at this temple, and I'm only here today because of the investment that the temple made in me. So come support our community. You know, this, this is a fundraiser, and it is, we need to make our numbers. And you see the lights and the live stream, and everybody who works at this temple, 
It takes a lot. So please come support Temple Emmanuel. Um, and I tried to make it as easy as possible. We're flying in some of the most amazing performers in the world. Um, Seth Radetzky from Sirius Satellite Radio, who is going to be the best host ever. Anna Gasteyer from SNL. You might have seen her uh, in SNL or from in Mean Girls. She played Elphaba in Wicked. And my two best friends that I toured the country with doing High School Musical many years ago. Jelani Remy, who is um, in Back to the Future on Broadway. Ariel Jacobs, who's done everything from Wicked to In the Heights to Aladdin, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be a really wonderful night. It's on Monday night, May 13th. Um, a lot of people have said, oh my gosh, tickets are expensive. It's a dollar a day to support the temple. That's my new thing. If you put a dollar a day aside, one dollar. It'll actually be over. It'll, it'll actually be over a little bit. Yeah, it'll dollars. be over a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, and that being said, we, you know, we don't want to exclude people. So don't feel like you can't come to us and say, I want to make a donation, a meaningful donation, but I need some help because I want to see a thousand people here. <laughs> Is there anything else? Um, um, great. I would like to say thank you to Daniel for playing guitar tonight. Thank you to Sara. Um, thank you to Jenny who is outside um, who is our program director. She helped um, coordinate everything. And um, thank you to Emmett for being here. Oh my thank goodness. You thank you to Emmett for being here. Thank Yashikoa. you for making this such a full service night. Really, it's a full house and it's so joyous to be celebrating with all of you. Okay, two other things. Join us tomorrow morning for Shabbat morning at Emmanuel. Our rabbinic intern, Jake, will actually, this is actually infertility awareness Shabbat. Yes, there's a title for every Shabbat weekend, but he's going to be doing teaching on that. Also, if I think outside, you can buy some jewelry. And uh, from our congregant, Dina Carcenti, all the efforts go to Aid Israel. You can buy Women of the Wall, Talit, Hala covers, etc. cetera. Um, and then also, another Mazel Tov to the Harrow family. Yay, Reagan! You're getting so much before you've done anything. Um, we're, <laughs> we're so um, happy that you're here. Please join us for Osei Shalom. Put, stand up, put your arms around each other. This is a melody that Danny wrote that I just love. You just repeat after us. And then you'll join us for the Oneg in the other room. All right, it goes like this. Osei, Osei, Shalom, Shalom. to run back there. We'll just do a quick, quick kit mozi. Baruch, Penny's going. Baruch atarunai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem in haaretz b'tei avon. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>